I'm here at the Blockchain Innovation Conference 2019 at the ABN AMRO headquarters in Amsterdam, speaking with some of the speakers who uh, have come off the stage or are about to go on the stage about what's happening in the world of blockchain today. And I'm here with Jürgen Kubler from IBM. Jürgen, um, you're going to be talking uh, a little bit later uh, about all sorts of things, but uh, we were just preparing and you were talking about building ecosystems and specifically alliances. Now, I have some experience in building ecosystems. It sounds easy. We get everybody together and we have a great time. Usually, that's not how it starts. Tell us a little bit about your perspective from IBM on these kind of alliances for uh, using blockchain and related technologies. So, well, thank you for having me. Uh, the interesting piece about building alliances is, of course, that traditionally nobody trusts anybody, right? And, uh, you know, the hardest part about building these alliances is really creating that trust level. Uh, so you can make and, and do business in new ways or even in existing ways. So you almost can correlate the amount of trust you have amongst the participants in your alliance and the amount of business and they can generate. And, and this is really the new thing about blockchain. You know, when you carve out the cryptocurrency side of blockchain yep. and really focus on the business side of blockchain, it allows you to create these trust profiles and it, creates, it tr allows you to create the trust to really do business in existing ways better and in new ways. So you can implement business models that were just not possible. Can you give us an example point. of a business model you've seen come out uh, and, and with names or without, depending on sure. uh, your comfort zone, but a new business model that simply wasn't possible or wasn't practical before bringing blockchain type technologies into the game? Absolutely. So when you think of the manufacturing sector, for example, um, when you are a large company like a large automotive um, manufacturer, um, and you have your tier one and tier two suppliers. It, of course, they're all afraid that they would have to disclose their entire production data yep. uh, and expose themselves. Now with blockchain, you can create a way where everybody continues to have their production systems, but you create this thin layer, as thin as possible, trust layer that allows you to share selective data. So you still own it, but you share only the subset that is actually needed to do what you need to do in order to to produce the business results you're after. So everybody continues to maintain and own their data, but shares to the amount that these new business models are possible. So if I can just dive a little bit deeper on that to make sure I understand it, and I have a bit of a supply chain background, so I, I think I've got this good. For example, sharing uh, stock and capacity levels. Correct. You don't, as a, as a supplier, want to say, well, you know, I've, I've, I've got let's make some numbers up here, 10 million available and six are for you because then you've obviously just completely given away the game. You are my number one largest That's customer right. and you can now uh, hold me to account for that. But what you can say is I've got six million available and here is the evidence and they are allocated to you and here is the evidence. And here's where they are and here's they will be shipped and yes, they fit right into your just-in-time schedule. Yeah. And you, you really expose the things that need to be exposed and you keep the other things masked yeah. or obfuscated. You know? yeah. And of course that was harder with ERP systems. We had the data, but yeah. it was all or nothing. Yeah. And of course that required horrific levels of EDI and, and middlemen and, and software. And, and, and now we can just put that data where it needs to be in a controlled and trustworthy place. That's correct. And the first human error, you're, you're one human error away from exposure, right? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and that, that would have been disastrous. And, and I think that's what's new and that's what's exciting. And you know, over the last two or three years, that's what companies have experimented with. Is that really true? Is that hold, does that promise yeah. hold true? Now they know it holds true, and you have seen, for example, to make a real-world example, TradeLens, our container shipping solution yep. on a global basis, where you know you have ports and terminals, and customs agencies, and ocean shippers, and freight forwarders, and yep. retailers, and growers. The, you know, we have started with about 20% of the world market and has grown now with additional carriers to about 50% of the world market. So you see these very large networks we have been building over the last four years, yep. reaching a tipping point where the gravitational pull will be such that, you know, in a, in a business where you have slim margins, you just cannot afford not to save this thousand dollars per container. Right, absolutely. Um, in, and, and, you know, the, the promise holds true. And that's yeah. the exciting stuff. So 2019 and 2020, we'll see a very large um, focus on business value and actually making these things uh, a reality. Right, and that has, I think, an upside and a downside, right? Because what you're saying is, you know, if you can, if you can save a thousand dollars a container, which is a significant amount of money per container, um, 
one of the things I see with alliances is you invite somebody to join and the first thing they want to know is what's in it for me. Yeah. And certainly in supply chain, we can say, well, you know, most of the bureaucracy is paperwork today that yes. can be digitized. We all benefit from the reduction of that cost. Yes. Every, you know, you are literally going to save money. And, and okay, not in the first days and the weeks and months no. because there is investment, but over time, it makes everything better and everybody benefits. So it's not one party getting the benefit. Right. It's the more we do this together, the more we can do this together, we get to share those benefits between us. And so like you say, it's gonna to get to a tipping point where not doing it is no longer an option because you will no longer be competitive, you will no longer be trustworthy. Um, that's quite logical in a supply chain perspective. You know, supply chains are reasonably logical, incredibly complex, but mm -hmm. logical. Um, do you see this taking shape in other industries in the world? Excellent question, absolutely. So I've been in directly involved in shaping governance rules and monetization schema in about 200 blockchains. So I can give you other examples. For example, in uh, Japan we and in the US, we have a platform that facilitates uh, copyright, um, copyright reconciliations. You yep. know, when, when you think of all the different mu music platforms you have, Spotify, you know. Pandora. Pandora, Google Music, you know now. Apple. Apple. Um, so it, it, it's, it's really a very, you, you, you know, you know it from downloading a song from a platform, but what's next behind that is an unbelievably complex yep. process where you have artists that want to, of course, see the fruits of their labor in terms of royalty payments, and it goes through all these different channels, so who watched what and where and when. So to do all that, blockchain will be implemented right now. Media Ocean is an example we have published uh, in the US. Uh, in, 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 in Japan, it's, it's in the building stages. Uh, when you look into the responsible sourcing platform, so this is about uh, car batteries that contain cobalt, yep. right? Uh, it is about conflict minerals in the electronics industry like tin, tantalum, yep. tungsten and gold. Uh, where do they really come from? Was there child labor involved? So. The, the fascinating thing that, that just excites me beyond everything else is not only solving economic problems, but solving socioeconomic problems. Yep. So where you can now be in a position where you take money out of certain parts of a supply chain and replace them with token and make sure that these miners, these smaller scale miners, yep. get the benefits they want, sometimes in war-torn areas, yep. you know, where you, we can issue education credits and food credits. Yep. Instead uh, of cash, which you of then cash have no with, control you know, over. Instead of cash, a bigger guy takes it away from a smaller guy. Yep. So you can start solving socioeconomic problems. And, and these are the things that, that, that are fascinating. And, and people start really to do this. I mean, we have announced the responsible sourcing blockchain network with uh, Volkswagen with uh, Ford Motor Company and other miners and, and battery manufacturers like, like LG Chem. And, and you know, they all are seeing now the opportunity, and they have in the past, but now the opportunity to really make, in effect, meaningful change yeah. with what's quite frankly a piece of technology, right? Yeah, the but business side remains the same. Right, and that's what I find fascinating. The shift over the last few years in technology in general, but particularly around blockchain and crypto and, and distributed ledger is, it's gone from being the goal to yeah. being a tool. Correct. How can we make applications on top or how can we use this to do better things in the world? And for some people that's make more money and for some, as you said, it's really how can we, how can we do less evil things or, or more impactful things or both of those at the same time. Yeah. Um, so you're involved in building these alliances and these, these kind of like ecosystem uh, things. What are the sort of top three or five things that you see that go wrong where uh, people want to step into these alliances but are not, not successful? So. It, it is when people doing it for economic drivers only. And what I mean by that, economic drivers for themselves. Yep. So when you make the mistake um, to not set these consortia and these networks or syndicates as they're called in the uh, natural resource industry, when you don't set them up fair and equitably and democratically, uh, and you don't utilize and leverage the chance to democratize certain inequalities that do exist today, then you will fail you will not reach the critical point of gravity or critical point of gra uh, gravitational pull these networks should have in order to survive. Because if money is the central goal, then everybody's fighting for the same piece of the money. Well, it, it you need to make sure that, let's, let's do trade lens, right? When you are a large container shipping company like Maersk and you own about 18.9% of the world market, the economic benefit that you achieve by bringing in one container into this network needs to be the same 
that when MSC brings a container yep. or Hapag Lloyd brings a container, if that's different, why would I join, right? right? So ownership percentages and, and, and economic structures may be the way they are, but the economic benefit you achieve as a certain class or a particular member type in that network needs to be equitable and democratic, otherwise you're no. not going to succeed. So leave your ego at the door and come in with an eco perspective Correct. is the number one tip for making and blockchain a successful. Blockchain is just a tool. It no. will go the way middleware went, it will go the way all these, the way all these other things go and it becomes part of mainstream and you know, in 10 years we will not have a blockchain discussion. No. It just is a business discussion as it we'll should We'll just be. be using software. Correct. Yeah. One last question. Um, you get to obviously attend a lot of these kind of conferences and industry events. What's the most fascinating or uh, interesting thing you've heard in the last six, nine months? Again, I'm coming back to my, um, my personal favorite and that is solving socioeconomic problems. When you talk to representatives from governments, you know, I had the opportunity to talk to very high-ranking government officials up to presidents of countries. That's really what this is about, right? This is not another, you know, how do you make a buck? Uh, and, and, and I think people will see in short order in the next two years that this chance of solving socioeconomic problem on top of, so, of, on top of economic problem is, is what makes this so fascinating and so different. So that sounds to me like an invitation if any of our viewers are from companies who want to uh, incorporate these kind of uh, uh, social economic uh, challenges into their business model, come talk to you guys at IBM. Absolutely. You can help them figure out the how and make their business better at the same time. We'd love to. I'm Nick Stevens reporting live from the Blockchain Innovation Conference here in Amsterdam. It's 2019 and it's been a pleasure talking to Jürgen Kubler from IBM. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for sir. having me.